Hello guys and welcome back to Liftoff. As usual, we always keep you updated with everything space and everything SpaceX. Today's episode is about SpaceX Raptor engines and what the company did to produce one engine within 48 hours. Let's find out. Elon Musk wants to create a self-sustaining city on Mars. Do you know how much a city weighs? That's a lot. To get that weight from one planet to another, you need some seriously advanced rockets. And the engine that powered them needs to be even more advanced. This is where the Raptor engine comes in. The most advanced rocket engine that humanity has ever created. It needs to be like a car engine. Something that you can turn on and off without ever worrying that it's going to blow up. But instead of taking you to the supermarket, it takes you to another planet. Something this complicated is hard to design. It's even harder to manufacture hundreds of times. Elon Musk has famously said it is probably a factor of 10 harder to design a manufacturing system for a rocket than a rocket itself. The same holds true for a rocket engine. And yet Elon Musk revealed that it's quickly approaching the capability to build one Raptor engine every 48 hours. That's 3.5 engine cutting rocket engines every week. This translates to one Starship launch every 64 days. Once they're increased to 32 Raptors per booster. That doesn't sound fast when you remember that Elon Musk wants to put 1 million people on Mars by 2050. The SpaceX Raptor engines is one of the few full flow staged combustion cycle engines in the world. This includes the entire history of rocket engineering too. And more impressive, SpaceX is pushing the envelope of what we believed was even possible. SpaceX impressively develops and manufactures these rockets in-house. This gives SpaceX immense flexibility to quickly test, fail, tweak and repeat. This is the lean startup mantra applied to rocket engineering. I know, crazy right? Who would have imagined we'd apply agile development to rockets? Supply chain awesomeness aside, the Raptor engines have a huge responsibility. They'll one day power the SpaceX Starship to Mars. So yeah, these engines need to be powerful and reliable, to say the least. The Raptor engine is innovative, to one degree or another, in several ways. The most significant difference between the Raptor and any other liquid fueled rocket engine is that it is a full flow staged combustion engine, the first to have ever flown. To clarify, there have been two other FFSC engines built, the Soviet RD-270 and the Aerojet Rocketdyne Integrated Powerhead Demonstrator. Neither design progressed further than engine stand testing, neither even flew. Blue Origin BE-4 and SpaceX Raptor are staged combustion cycle or closed cycle rocket engines, but they differ in their design. Blue Origin's BE-4 is a single shaft oxygen rich staged combustion cycle engine. All leftovers are used in the main combustion chamber, thus increasing efficiency and also complexity. This design is not as common as open cycle engines, but has been developed and used before. SpaceX's Raptor, however, is a twin shaft full flow staged combustion cycle engine. Opposed to the BE-4, it has two pre-burners, each running its own pump. The design increases performance, if the increased complexity doesn't destroy it first. In 2014, SpaceX began using additive manufacturing to produce rocket parts at scale and sent its first 3D printed part to outer space. Now, their mission to colonize Mars by 2050, the company is using 3D printing technologies, including direct metal laser sintering, to print parts in days rather than months. SpaceX is building rockets that can be refueled and reused many times over thanks to high performance parts 3D printing producers. The printed components include propellant valves, turbo parts and parts of the injector system. Some of the main challenges facing the company go from making light spaceships to efficient engines and even perfecting propulsive landing. In this regard, 3D printing allows for a great reduction of production costs and enhances the thrust to weight ratio of the engines, since it enables the production of lighter parts not possible through traditional methods. Another advantage of 3D printing engine components is the speed at which the design changes can be implemented, making the teams move faster through the iterations to achieve the desired output and in a shorter time span. Compared to weeks or even months, it could take otherwise. For many years, SpaceX has been evaluating the benefits of 3D printing and perfecting the techniques necessary to develop flight hardware, achieving some major successes along the way. 
and even cooperating with other companies to take 3D printing system capabilities to orbit. With additive manufacturing industries coming such a long way in the past decade, we can expect the company to continue to enlighten us with its vision of going to space. SpaceX runs around the clock operations to develop their technology and Starship spacecraft that could make it possible. The ambitious timeline pushes SpaceX teams to innovate rapidly. The company is preparing to perform its first orbital flight test with a prototype of the Starship launch system, which includes the spacecraft atop a gigantic super heavy rocket that will propel it to orbit. The company plans to launch Starship from South Texas to orbit, then land it off the coast of Hawaii during the first orbital flight attempt. This past week, engineers initiated the booster test campaign, which involves ground testing the stainless steel vehicle. Once in operation, the Starship Super Heavy Duo will become the world's most powerful rocket, capable of lifting over 100 tons of cargo with powerful Methalox Field Raptor engines. Musk says the rocket could have 29 to 30 Raptor engines. Each Raptor is capable of producing over 200 tons of thrust. The spacecraft will be equipped with six Raptor engines, three sea-level engines for atmospheric flight, and three Raptor vacuum engines for propulsion in space. These vacuum-optimized engines are much larger, worth noting that thrust is only slightly higher than the big bull nozzle version. A larger bull is primarily for efficiency in a vacuum. Aiming for 380 plus seconds ISP for RVAC long term, Initially likely to be 372, Musk previously said, Starship will be capable of transporting 100 passengers on long-duration voyages through space. It will feature private cabin rooms and common areas where the space adventurers will hang out in transit to the moon, Mars, and beyond. The company will set up a new engine manufacturing facility. We are breaking ground soon on a second Raptor factory at SpaceX Texas site, he said via Twitter. The factory will be located in McGregor, Texas, where SpaceX currently manufactures and tests the Falcon 9 Merlin engines. This will focus on volume production of Raptor 2, while California factories will make Raptor vacuum and new experimental designs, he said. By volume production, I mean two to four engines per day. That's super high volume for big rocket engines, but low volume for automotive standards, Musk added. Long term, he said that SpaceX targets to manufacture roughly 800 to 1,000 engines per year. That's about what SpaceX needs over 10 years to create the fleet to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. The city itself probably takes 20 years, so hopefully it is built by 2050, Musk said. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, subscribe, like, share, and turn on notifications so you will never miss any of space and SpaceX news. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.